Two boxers fought last weekend on the zone, and only one of them is a future star in boxing. Jerome Ennis or Jesse Bam Rodriguez. I'm gonna make you watch that whole episode before I tell you the actual answer, so go ahead and just fast forward to the end or listen to what I have to say. Because we had us a fantastic night of fights between two world champions and Boots had a tough night. But I'm not going to say just yet that I don't think he beats Crawford, even though we will be talking about that in a second here, right there. But he fought Karen Chukashian, and you're going to hear me mess up his name a lot today, um, to a 12-round decision. And Jerron Ennis had a really tough night because of the movement from Karen Chukashian all night. He pivoted off the front foot, he went underneath, and he really did catch drawn in his off guard at a lot of points in this fight before we get into this episode take a second and um subscribe to our newsletter it's real cheap you get extra articles every month on mma boxing and wrestling uh it's totally worth your time and you get all the videos too so yeah go check it out I thought the most telling part about this from Drone Ennis, though, was the fact that he was able to stay with it, to keep going, and to persevere despite him literally arguing with his corner in the middle of the fight. Absolutely. I, I love a lot of things about Drone Ennis. Mentally, he's not all there. And when I say that, I don't mean like, oh, he's slow. I mean he's easily flustered. And we saw that against Karen Chukajian all night three or four times he literally would argue with his corner like yeah i know i know i know like it was very very odd and he was winning the fight it was a very close fight in my opinion and karen chukajian really did come in and overperform from what we saw in the first fight like the scorecards even the closest scorecard doesn't do this fight justice on how close a lot of these rounds were like um steve weisfeld had it 116 to 110 in favor of boots so what I saw from Ennis I liked, though, was the fact that he did switch South Pole and Orthodox. We do like that. And when you're thinking about somebody like Terrence Crawford, who also switches stances, you want to be able to fight out of both stances just to be able to fight on your own terms. Um, I really liked his rear uppercut, and I loved his work in close range in the pocket with Karen Chukasian. So he did manage to get caught a couple times with some left hooks and all credit in the world to Karen Chukajian because um, those were really heavy left hooks, and he really did find those. But eventually, Jerron Ennis did manage to feel that out. Now, in the pocket, he knew he had the power advantage, probably by about a factor of two to one. I don't know what scientific terms I'm using that for, or using for those guys. I'm just making up numbers off the top of my dome here. But he had the heavy power advantage, and we saw he would he would hurt uh, Karen Chukajian at times. Um, but his clinch work where he would come with the rear uppercut, he would come over the top and just pound him. It, it was absolutely fantastic. I loved everything I saw, um, from the pocket work from Jerron Ennis. Now I didn't like how flustered he got, like I mentioned, and I did not like how, um, much Karen Chikazji had landed on him. I thought, you know, if he's fighting a Terrence Crawford, he's a matter of fact, you know what? Let's get into it. Jerron Ennis versus Terrence Crawford. I thought what I saw from Karen Chukajian here, a guy who's very mobile, not quite as much power, but he's got a lot of speed, and he's a smart fighter. He's Ukrainian. He's one of the Ukrainian guys. You know he's got a lot going for him. And he brought a really good a really good game plan to this rematch with Jerron Ennis. Because let's be honest, when this fight was like booked, we were like, why are we running this back? Karen Chukajian showed that Hey, I'm a good boxer, and that's a good division he's in. But when we're talking about Jerron Ennis versus Terrence Crawford here, um, it's a completely different story because Terrence Crawford can hit, and Jerron Ennis, he showed he could take a hit against Chikazian, sure, but what happens when he comes up against a real hitter? Now, Eddie Hearn is pitching the Virgil Ortiz fight, and I like that fight a lot because Virgil Ortiz is an all-action fighter. He's going to push the pace against Jerron Ennis. So if we're going to go Virgil Ortiz, tune up, then Terrence Crawford, I like it. The only problem with that is like Terrence Crawford's old. How old is Terrence Crawford exactly? Let's look it up because I think he's like 35, 36. Um, but yeah, his age is not on his side. Uh, 
And you can see here, um, Jerron Ennis, 27 years old. So, yeah, time is definitely not on his side. Let's pull up Bud real quick here. 37 now. He's almost 40. 37 years old. That's ancient in boxing. Like I'm almost 37. I'm 34, so that's not that far from 37. But in boxing terms, might as well be Joe Biden. Just walking out there kind of not trying to fall over. Now, we're talking about Terrence Crawford here, sure. But at the same time, Father Time waits for no man. And Jerron Ennis literally has 10 years on Terrence Crawford. So we're going to see what happens here and how this plays out. Because if Jerron Ennis can go out there and dominate Virgil Ortiz, no small task, and that deserves a whole discussion in its own right, and then Terrence Crawford fights lined up, I can give him a lot of credit here. But he has to show me his patience. He has to show me a lot of that pocket work that he was so good at. But he has to also show me improved defense. Because if he doesn't show you improved defense at all, Crawford's going to wipe the floor with him, and nobody's going to be able to, oh, well, you know, Boots lost to Crawford. kind of like they do with Canelo and Mayweather. Like, oh, he lost to Mayweather. Like, this dude could still have a great career at only 27 years old. So, he had a great night, sure. I still don't know how I feel about him. I used to say, like, you could go back to my past episode, oh, Canelo, uh, uh, Terrence Crawford destroys him. Some of the stuff I saw here kind of leans me back towards the other way, but I still, like, I'm going to talk out both sides of my mouth here. It was it was promising performance despite all the damage taken from Jerron Ennis, but also I don't think he stands a chance against Crawford right now. That said, give it two years. Crawford's 39. He's not retired. Canelo might have beat him up or something, and you got yourself a real good chance. Jesse Rodriguez, boom, is the man. He had himself eight third round knockout i mean it just was a landslide he fought pedro huvera um another name i'm gonna mess up for the wbc super flyweight Championship. three rounds is all it took jesse rodriguez so how much can we talk about three rounds not much but i will go ahead and tease what i talked about at the beginning of the video I do think Jesse Rodriguez is the future of boxing. He has all of the intangibles. He's infectious. He's smart. He fights well. Um, he, you know, he's got the Mexican style. He is just a brilliant, magnificent, fantastic, all good, very good day boxer. I can't get enough of Jesse Rodriguez. And I've been like telling everybody I know, like, hey, you gotta watch Jesse Rodriguez. My my, my buddy Josh at work, he I'm like, hey, dude, you gotta go watch Bam, because Bam can fight. And he's like, I'm gonna check it out, I'm gonna check it out. I don't think Josh checked out Bam. Josh, I know you're watching. Go watch Bam fight. He's special, man. Jesse Rodriguez is absolutely special. He just dominated Pedro Juvero, and he cut the ring off magnificently. He likes to square up and fight, but he also moves laterally as he's squared up very well. And as a southpaw, he's squared up, but he's putting Juvero's lead leg between his legs. You can't go nowhere. And now you're in the corner, you are squared up on, and Jesse Rodriguez can go to town on you. And that's what he did. He went to town. Third round knockout. This dude really is the man. I'm putting him as a fighter that is going to be undefeated for a very long time. Let's go real quick over to the web and see what else is in his division because, man, the dude was 42 and 4 he fought. Rodriguez is only 24 years old, guys. 24. The best fighter in his division is super flyweight. Daniel Mar uh, Fernando Martinez. Estrada's the one everybody wants to see. Chocolatito's another one. But you got. Ioka right here. That's another fight that people are sleeping on. Kosei Tanaka is another decent fight. Um, he just beat Juavera. Andrew Maloney could be somebody we see him fight in the future, sure. But, man, can you imagine Mexico versus Japan? I can, and I think that is just magnificent. I can't 
I, I, I come on here every time Jesse Rodriguez fights. I'm like, he's so good, guys. He's so good. And I just, I feel like I'm saying the same thing because he's doing the same thing every fight, dominating each and every time. Is he a pound for pound fighter? I say yes. Now we're, we're going to talk about this for a second here. Um, I can't pull up ring magazines, um, ratings anymore because Turkey Alashisha just bought it and they're redoing the website. But, uh, let's see. ESPN, let's do that. ESPN pound for pound rankings, huh? Let's go over to the web right here. Uh, Usyk rises to the top. Let's see. This will do. This will do for us on ESPN. Who they got? Usyk, Crawford, in a way. We can't argue with that. Oh, this is an old list because now we need Bitter B of it, number four. Canelo, um, Tank shouldn't be in there. Shakur shouldn't be in there. They got Bam at nine. So... They got Bam at nine. So if he goes out there and beats Estrada, um, if he beats Chocolatito, who's a little bit past his bar. Yeah, sure. But if he goes out there and beats these guys, there's no way you can say Jesse Rodriguez is not a pound-for-pound -pound fighter. Just because he's 115, you don't like the smaller guys, go watch him fight. Everybody was so hyped on Vasily Lomachenko a few years ago because of what Lomachenko did with his footwork and how offensive he was. That's what Jesse Rodriguez brings to the table. He's literally reincarnated Roberto Duran like what's not to like about him he's that good he's so much fun to watch he is beating all of the guys he needs to beat he doesn't shy away from a challenge so yes Jesse Rodriguez is a pound for pound fighter no ifs ands or buts about it while I think right now Terrence Crawford just circling back Terrence Crawford would put a whopping on Jerron Ennis and Jesse Rodriguez puts a whopping on pretty much everybody he fights, right? None of them put whoppings quite on like Jack Dempsey used to do because they don't have the same rules anymore. This film study of Jack Dempsey, we talk about his fight with Jess Willard and how he absolutely just mauled a man and didn't let him get up before he was on top of him again. Great fight. You need to go watch this tape study.